Hey, welcome to the Virtually Speaking podcast series on exploring VMware Cloud Foundation inside the private cloud. My name is Pete Fletch and I'll be your host, joined by my good friend, Mr. John Nicholson. John, how you doing, buddy? It's good to be here. It's good to actually be you know, in person. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is an exciting series. We're, we're walking all the way through the entire offering of VMware Cloud Foundation, but this is going to be a really good episode because we're talking about like what's inside the entire offering, uh, and we're not doing it alone. We're joined by our good friends from Technical Marketing, Kyle Gleed and Heath Johnson. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for good having to be here. us. Thanks. Yeah, so uh, why don't we just take it from the top? I mean, like, let's just start. We all understand what VMware Cloud Foundation is, and we know that there's been some changes recently with the acquisition, but what does VMware Cloud Foundation look like today? Yeah, so we have been always bringing together multiple products to build VMware Cloud Foundation, right? So if we kind of go over to the slides a little bit, we could kind of talk about what's inside it from what our customers already know right, from a vSphere perspective. Yeah. So uh, to start things out, we've got VMware ESX, right? It's the hypervisor that our customers know and love for such a long time, right? And so that's built in officially from the ground up, right? From there, we've got vSphere, right? And so vSphere is the vCenter that brings ESX and vSphere together, right? And these are two of the core components of VMware Cloud Foundation. So for our customers that have vSphere and ESXi, it is critical component of VMware Cloud Foundation. It's something you already have and you already know and love and know how to manage and use going forward. So it's not big changes there from a day-to-day -day vSphere administrator perspective. From there, what else we've got, Kyle? Well, so we take vSphere, then we're gonna add on our software-defined storage and with Cloud Foundation, that's vSAN. With the vSAN, uh, keep in mind that we do have support for other types of storage as well. We're not saying you have to use vSAN. But for that initial cluster, what we call the management domain, uh, we do use automation to stand that up. And so it's good to have the vSAN because we can basically build that vSAN data store from the ground up using our automation very easily. And yeah, so that's software-defined storage. Then we add on software-defined networking with NSX. And, and those are the four core building blocks. You got ESXi, vCenter, vSAN, NSX, and that kind of is the, every Cloud Foundation instance is gonna have those four building blocks. Yeah. And then on top of that, we can then build from there. So for example, we can layer on the Tanzu piece and we can enable Kubernetes and turn that cluster into a supervisor cluster and start running uh, Kubernetes workloads. And then of course, once you've got this all built out, you know, how do I monitor health and performance? How do I do showback? How do I do costing? Um, how do I do log aggregation? And what if I want to use something like templates to deploy workloads? So that's where the, the ARIA suite comes in with the vRealize or the ARIA product set. And so um, that's, in a nutshell, kind of what you get in Cloud Foundation. So the names may change, um, but the building blocks, the components are, are the same. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so, and I'm sure for folks that are familiar with VMware Cloud Foundation, that doesn't seem like much has changed in that regard. It is an offering now, and we're not going to get into P&P. This is definitely not a pricing. I, I think I think it's free, isn't it free? Yeah, uh, it's definitely <laughs> definitely free. No, no, but so, but just from a technical perspective, I know there's more than that, right? So there's add-ons, and we won't get into prices, but obviously we have add-ons for disaster recovery and things like that, as well as enhanced security. You know, and we're going to have some uh, additional sessions on this series, going over these various add-ons and and all of the individual components. But for the purposes of, th of this discussion, you mentioned software-defined storage. Um, and you mentioned uh, using vSAN as well as other storage. Um, for the workload domain, there's a choice, but for the management domain, you mentioned it's it's going to be just vSAN, correct? Yeah. So and and it's good to understand the kind of the difference between the workload domain, uh, the VI, the virtual infrastructure workload domain, and the managed domain. Uh, the managed domain is that first uh, instance, that first vSphere instance that we stand up. And its significance is that that's where we're going to host all the vCenter servers, all the NSX managers, and that kind of instantiates our what will become the core of our private cloud. And that's where the SDDC manager is going to run. And the SDDC manager is that automation component that's going to drive a lot of the automation in terms of how we provision clusters and how we resize clusters and how we deploy NSX edge clusters. So that management cluster, um, that gets created uh, using something called the Cloud Builder. And the Cloud Builder is a, an OVA you download um, and you go in, you provide your customer specific information, such as what VLANs you want to use, what IP addresses you're going to use, what host names you want to use, your DNS entry, all that customer specific information gets passed into the cloud builder. And then we instantiate the, um, the first cluster, the first vSphere instance. And for that uh, management domain, vSAN is required. So, you know, as a, you know, you do have to have the vSAN ready nodes. So grab some, yeah, some, some 
NVMe drives populated with populated. those running nodes, and it'll go build out that data store. Yeah. And it will build it out, and it's you know all fully automated, and you, you, you're up and running. And then at that point, you can run compute workloads on the managed domain, but what most people want to do is they want to kind of keep that dedicated to management, and they want to put their workloads, their compute workloads, on separate clusters. So I have separation. And so for that, uh, you'll create what we call virtual infrastructure workload domains. And for those, you can pick any type of storage you want, whether you want NFS, fiber channel, or you want to do like VVOLs or vSAN. Um, you have a, that's where the flexibility comes in. So yes, vSAN is required for that first manager domain. But from then on, you know, if you've got existing storage in your environment you want to leverage to take advantage of, you want to bring into your cloud foundation, private cloud, then great. Just when you bring those hosts in, you'll identify the type of storage you're going to use, and you'll use that type of storage. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, uh, especially from the management perspective. Obviously, like VCF, the whole storyline around VCF is to have this thing that is like, it's in a box, it's it's going to work for you. You don't have to do too much. You know, we're bringing this whole cloud infrastructure to you, like, so you don't have to be piecemealing it. You know, that's a, that's a big part of the value proposition. So having the storage built into the management domain makes perfect sense to me. Of course, it also makes sense for customers that need to leverage, you know, existing investments on storage to be able to use those and take advantage of those for workload domains. So that, that makes sense to me. So yeah, the storage is, uh, you know, we, we always put it on the slides. We always call it out as one of the building blocks. And that creates a little bit of confusion because it, it is required, but keep in mind that you're not required to use it everywhere. It's just got a very spe specific use case. Now, of course, it would be good to have you use it everywhere. And well, and you've got the entitlements now yeah. bundled in. So. And now you're, you're paying for it. And so um, might as well use it and take advantage of it. But at the same time, if, if I've got a big, you know, fiber channel array or a big NAS array and I want to continue to use that, then great, go yeah. for it. Yeah, Heath, you, you guys have both been at VMware, uh, now Broadcom, for, for a long time. So, And you've been working primarily on VMware Cloud Foundation. So from your experience, what has changed from over the years from the, the original deployments of VCF to, to the way it looks now? Yeah, I don't want to go too far back in history, sure. but Cloud Foundation has changed quite a bit, right? We used to actually control hardware and top rack switches and stuff like that. It was a very interesting product early on. Um, but now the current edition is more focused towards a cloud-like experience, right? So it's making it easier for our customers. If you go to a public cloud provider and you want access to resources, you just you know swipe a credit card online and you get access to infrastructure, right? Software-defined storage, compute, and networking. And that's what we're giving our customers here on premises with Cloud Foundation. The ability to quickly and easily using automation of VMware Cloud Foundation, spin up all these resources and get access to infrastructure quickly so you can deploy your business apps in a very fast manner, just like being in a public cloud, but we're doing it inside a private data center. Well, and those, those components seem pretty critical because you know obviously you need storage for things, but also like on the networking, you know, overlays are just an effect of life in public cloud and, and having that same capability of, I don't have to go call a network, my networking team, have them go hand chisel a VLAN or something like that, have the overlays automatically deliver that. It looks like really it's just the focus on making sure you have the, the design down right and you, you know, get all that information, you know, your, your BGP handoffs or whatever it may be for your setup. And then from there, you know, your day two operations are pretty easy. Right, from a, from a like you're mentioning, it's, it, the architecture is interesting with Cloud Foundation, right? It's a prescribed architecture, and if you think about going to public cloud infrastructure, you don't get to dictate things like, hey, give me a VLAN, yeah. right? You can't get VLANs from public cloud, right? You're leveraging the infrastructure that they have pre-designed for you, and we're doing that same thing on-premises, and that gives us the ability to consistently provide infrastructure. And it's that consistency that really drives business value. Being able to stamp out infrastructure the same over and over and over again, and you know what to expect. And we do it quickly and easily with automation. And so it's that architecture that's defined by VMware Cloud Foundation that helps drive that value. I'm glad you mentioned uh, automation. So, the, and we're going to get into, uh, we have a whole series dedicated to deployment and operations, but from a vSphere administrator perspective, like how does this look different? Yeah, so like we've been talking about, right, some of the things we've discussed so far are very cloud-like, right, being able to deploy infrastructure. But from a vSphere administrator perspective, um, a, a vSphere admin is typically going in and creating virtual machines and, you know, managing business applications and things like that through the vCenter interface. All that still exists, right? So we've the conversation of VMware and Cloud Foundation really just moves up another level to help you deploy and manage infrastructure at a cloud level 
inside your private data center. All those typical things that you've been doing from a day-to-day -day perspective for managing those application virtual machines still exist. You're still a vSphere administrator. We're just helping you deploy and manage that infrastructure better and faster inside your data center. So I know, I know NSX is part of the, the core components of VMware Cloud Foundation. And for many VMware customers, they, some might not be familiar with NSX. You know, I know obviously there's a lot of customers that were just using you know, vSAN or and vSphere or maybe possibly not using NSX. But, but even for those that do uh, use NSX, what does it look like? Is it any different to than the NSX that, that has been in the uh, traditional offerings? Yeah, so the NSX is, is just NSX. I mean, whether you stand it up uh, yourself or as part of just a, an NSX fabric or whether you do it as part of Cloud Foundation, um, it's the same NSX product. There's not a different version of NSX that we bundle. What's significant is we were just talking about the STDC manager and the automation it provides. Um, every time you deploy a new workload domain or you deploy a new vSphere cluster, um, behind the scenes, the STDC manager is going to be configuring that as part of an NSX fabric. So you always have NSX there, even though it's going to be largely transparent to you because you're not manually installing it, you're not manually deploying it, you're not prepping your host. You just create a workload domain, you go in and you connect to NSX manager and it's there and it's, and it's ready for you. The NSX is there. Um, there's also additional tie-ins to help. You know, when I first started working with NSX, it was like a big learning curve. I was like, wow, this is a, a lot for to learn. And I struggled with some of the things like edge clusters and, and TEP networks and overlays. Um, but when I got the STC manager and the automation, it became kind of like a crutch and it helped me because suddenly I just go through, I deploy it and it's already up and running and I can go back into the UI and I can click around and say, oh, this is how they set it up. Oh, this is what that is, okay. And so, and it made it very easy. And so now when I go in and I start looking at overlay networks and I start looking at how to design, like for example, if I want to do town zoo, on top of my vSphere clusters. I enable supervisor cluster. I have NSX. I use the, it goes out with the NSX container plugin, sets everything up, and I'm up and running with Tanzu on NSX with logical networks. And so breaking down some of this, you know, you mentioned how as you add each workload domain, you're doing that. What are some of the reasons that these workload domains would be created and why do we need that segmentation? Is this for tenancy? What is that model? So Tennessee is one option. We, we have a couple of options. Um, you can deploy your workload domains in a ring and, uh, with enhanced link mode. Okay. And so you would do that, like an enterprise might do that if I have maybe five or six different clusters and I want to have a single pane of glass, I can use that enhanced link mode and uh, give me that, that central management point. Um, you can also deploy isolated, which means every uh, workload domain, their vCenter server have its own SSO domain, which gives you some multi-tenancy. Some other things to factor into that is um, when it comes to patch windows and how you do lifecycle management. If I have multiple workload domains, I'm going to have to apply updates multiple times sure. because each workload domain's got its own vCenter server, its own vSphere cluster. But I might want that, say I have a VDI environment where I'm willing to take a little risk and run a newer right. code train sooner versus my core ERP you know, or manufacturing process. There may be windows of the year that I can't do major patching on or right and one of the new features we added in the latest versions of cloud foundation is this idea of being able to uh, support having different workload domains run at different levels for example i might want to be running 5.0 and i might want to upgrade my vdi to 5.1 but i might want to keep my my tanzu environment down to 5.0 for a, of a while test and a pro yeah. or for a test or a prod so um, i think it's the other way around because you know those devop hipsters man they want to be on the yeah they want to be on the leading latest, bleeding they're so. going to be on the latest one <laughs> yeah my, my docker image is always set to latest yeah, yeah. but uh <laughs> So multi-tenancy is one. You can uh, get a, a pretty good degree of multi-tenancy by separating workload domains with separate SSO domains. Is there like an availability zone type option with this or is that more just with different clusters that might segment them at a physical level? So like for availability zones, we do have support for like stretch clusters. Oh, okay, can, so I can span data centers. You can span across uh, availability zones across data centers and uh, you can actually even go further if you want to have like a, a VCDR solution where you use vSphere replication with SRM and set it up. Uh, if you follow the VMware Valid solutions, the way we deploy ARIA suite in the VMware Validated Solutions is a dual region BCDR solution. And we also have this. So we do have the concept of being able to take a, a, v, a workload domain, a cluster in a workload domain, and stretch it across the availability zones, part of stretch vs for a cluster. Um, or do, so I can also have that network though, like you said, for the, the business continuity disaster recovery, the BCDR piece, that doesn't have to be five milliseconds away. That could be, you know, from here to Arizona or something. And Correct. Then, Asynchronous. And, yeah. and then I use, you know, VMware Live Recovery, you know, formerly SRM to replicate those virtual machines over and the networks are now replicated right. over. So when stuff comes on, the VMs aren't wondering where their broadcast domain is. So that's, that's pretty handy of being able to simplify that disaster recovery by doing the overlay networking, you know, which 
the deployment and the stand up becomes really easy this way. Yeah, and with that, when you fail over, like if I'm doing overlay networking and I fail something over, I don't have to change IP addresses because I'm using this layer two network here, using layer two network here. When it comes over, I just update my gateway to point to the new site and the VM doesn't, not even aware that, hey, I was replicated and came up because I'm the same IP address, same personality. That's the way it should be, absolutely. Well, gentlemen, um, I'm gonna cut it short for this episode. This is just a brief overview of sort of what's inside the box. I'm looking forward to this series. It's gonna be you know 10 or so episodes just walking through the various components, uh, including actually day zero to day two operations, which we'll be having you guys back on that one. Looking forward to it. Keith, Kyle, thanks for joining us. Right. Thank you, glad to be here. All right.